Here's a demonstration of router sim cutting MDF door panels. What we can do is set up an Excel spreadsheet that has our cut list in it. Basically, I have the name of my door, the style of door. Now, this could be drawing files, DXF files, or parametric macros, and that's what I'm using here. Router sim actually includes over 40 different parametric door macros with it. So I've got all different door macro styles, and I'll show you that list a little later. In this column, I've got the name of my macro or the name of the door style, then the material, the quantity, the length, the width, the thickness. Maybe this is the job name. Each additional column here, these could be label information or the type of machine, the post processor. All different information can be imported right from an Excel spreadsheet like this. So what we'll do is we start up the router sim automation, and we use the import wizard for importing from a common delimited or Excel spreadsheet. And we'll select that Excel spreadsheet file from the list. I can select my file, pick the spreadsheet to convert, and then in here I'm going to select what each column is. So uh, you can tell it what each column is in the data. This first column is going to be my part name. And here you can see all the different things that you can import, the label information, the thickness, the post processor name, how you're going to nest it filler quantities and things like that. So I've got part name, this column is my material, this one will be my quantity, my X dimension, my Y dimension, this is the thickness, and this will be the job name. Now once you set up your spreadsheets one time like this, you could save this format and use it over and over. Every time you pick a spreadsheet, you don't have to pick what each column is, you can just select it from a, a pull down menu here. Once you've got all your columns labeled, you can pick the import button, and that builds a job in router sim. And the job has all of your parts in it. You could pick on a part and get a preview of it, and you could see what the door is going to look like. Here's our style one, which is a cathedral type of door. That's going to be eight of those and 18 by 19 and a quarter dimensions. Here I'm going to get 12 of them that are 16 by 27. You can see the preview changes here. So I've got my style two, which is a cathedral top and bottom. And again, they're in different dimensions and different quantities. And we've got other door styles in here, including very complex door styles. These are all parametric macros that are included with the router set. One other item here, I'm going to do the advanced nesting. I'm going to have the common line nesting turned on because these are completely square shapes. We'll be able to use a common line, which will reduce our cycle time up to 40%. When we run the job, each part will, will open up, make a toolpath, and generate the G-code file or the program file for a single part, and I'll also get the program file for the nested sheets. There's the first part activates, and I'm actually getting two toolpaths on the inside of each one of these panels. I've got this layer associated with two different knowledges. So RouterSim has a layer to knowledge association where you could tell it what the layer name is and what type of toolpaths to create. So I'm generating a couple different toolpaths on the inside. And my single programs here get generated with an outside toolpath. So I'm getting a program for the entire part in case one of the parts moves or falls during processing. The operator already has the program to run the part by itself. Put a piece of scrap up on the machine and you'll be able to cut that part by itself instantly. You don't have to make another program. The program's already there. Also, each one of these parts generates a little cycle time report. You'll see this Excel spreadsheet popping up on the screen. That's a single part report. So it's going to tell me how many um, tools were used for each one of these parts, what the cycle time is for the part. All the information about that part is stored in a little Excel spreadsheet that's generated for each part. I'll also get another report in an Excel spreadsheet that's used for the entire sheet, like uh, the yields and the cycle time for the whole sheet, the scrap area, all of the uh, area information about the material is saved in another spreadsheet. So we get our nesting report there. Here you can see each one of those parts has popped up and made a program for us. And then the nesting will start up here in a second and we'll get nested sheets for our, the quantities that we asked for there. There may be several nested sheets required. Let's 
So the program is analyzing the best yield and the nested sheets show up here. And I've also got something turned on that will also analyze the sheet sizes. So here you can see I've got some 5x10s and 5x12s and 4x8s. I've got different material sizes here and the material sizes are based on the best yield. I can either pick best yield or best price. Each one of these sheets is being sequenced and NC code is generated for each sheet and a printout for each sheet is generated in a, in a PDF file or it prints to whatever uh, Windows printer you have. So each one of those sheets gets output and in the end here we get a button that we pick to open the results and we went from a spreadsheet to single part programs and nested sheet programs for all those MDF doors. Here's my NC code files and my PDF files for my whole sheets. So you get the sheet printouts right here. These can go to any printer and you get the single part programs as well. So there's a little Excel spreadsheet like I said for the single part programs. Here's the different tools that were used and how many of each tool and the cycle time for this tool for this whole part is about 52 seconds, but we add some other variables like machine related downtime and handling and setup time and personal fatigue. So it gives you a more realistic 71 seconds to cut that one part. Now here's how many inches that each one of those tools cut and you can plug in your tool life in, in inches or millimeters and your tooling costs and it'll add those up for you. You can actually get a cost per part here. You get your cost per part, how many parts you can get in an hour, how many in a shift, how many hours to complete a yearly quantity. These are all uh, variables you can put in your Excel spreadsheet. Now, even though we programmed a lot of the cuts at 1,250 inches a minute here, sometimes the tool was doing this speed or this speed, there's variances in the feed rate to come up with a more accurate cycle time. So you get this report for the single part. You get the program for the single part. Here's a little tool simulation just to run that one part by itself. And again, I've got two different tools going in there, cleaning things up. There's the simulation for that single part by itself. Now, I also get the program for the nested sheets. Here you can see those in PDF files. You can run those through the simulation. We actually save the, the nest as an AutoCAD drawing file so that you can go back and make changes to the nest if you like. You can actually open this up and make changes to this nest and create uh, your own nested your own nest as well or move parts around. Here you could see the common line toolpath to cut that sheet out on the outside. I have a series of zigzags going up and down and a series of zigzags going left and right. So when those are held on top of each other we cut out all those squares at the same time there. And you can see we're actually doing a ramping motion there. You see if I just move those on top of each other you know, where they were, you can see how the common line works. Two edges are cut at the same time. We're ramping the tool in and out of the material. In each case, we're ramping those tool motions. That's going to give you a much better tool life and reduce spindle bearing wear. So you can actually save on a spindle rebuild by using the router some software. And each one of these cases, I've got that common line toolpath, which greatly reduces the cycle time. I'm just going to move those up again here so you can see. I've got some zigzag left and right, some zigzag up and down. And that's a, a quite a bit shorter toolpath doing it that way. I'll move these guys again. You can see again a left and right and an up and down zigzag. Much shorter cycle times. These part numbers correspond to the labels. So RouterSim also included labeling in there. Uh, back in the folder where all the results are stored, you have your labels. And we use the Avery labeling software with RouterSim. So you can customize your own labels. Here's a print preview. You can see a picture of the parts on the labels. You can use this Avery software to customize the labels. We've got up to 15 label fields. There's two graphics. You can have a picture of the part as well as a barcode on each label. And uh, here's the examples of the labels from this job. We get several sheets of labels right from this job. Now, if you want to, you can make your own labels. 
You can choose from any one of the hundreds of different Avery label styles. Okay, so if you want to use these little tiny labels, maybe you just get the part name and material and customer name on there. So you can customize these labels. It's a full Avery labeling solution included. Plus, we make a text file that's a comma delimited file that you can read in your own label solution if you have your own labeling software. Also stored in the results is your summary report for the whole sheet. So here I have my uh, each sheet and there's my different sheet sizes and the summary report here is going to tell me how much yield I got. So uh, in one case here I've got 100% uh, part yield. So the parts used, you know, when you take out the toolpath the parts took up 100% of the sheet on there. So I got very high yields with the router sim. It also keeps track of your scrap areas. It's got your tooling summary again. Here's all your different tools that were used for this whole nest. How many inches they were used, how many inches each one of those tools used. And here's the different feed rates that the tools were cutting at. So I had some very aggressive 1400 inch a minute feed rates and uh, router sim has a way to do that because we're ramping that tool in and out we can cut at the higher feeds. Here's my cycle times for each sheet as well. So you get a spreadsheet for the entire job, you get a spreadsheet for the single parts, you get your uh, NC code files for the single parts, you get your NC code files for the whole sheets, you get your PDF files for the nested sheets, you get the drawing results saved, so you can edit the results, you get uh, labels in there, and you've got these parametric macros for each one of the parts. That's router sim cutting MDF doors in just a few minutes right from an Excel spreadsheet.